then if you tested me on one of my bad days, number-wise, wouldn't you think my health was worse than it really is, or even more alarming? If you tested me on a good day, might you miss something important? The answer is not so. You're forgetting what was mentioned earlier. It's not the individual numbers we look at. It's the pattern produced by all the numbers together that creates the significant overall picture. Your numbers may drift up or down, but the overall pattern will remain unchanged until you do something about it. The beauty of the RBTI program is that as the mineral supply improves and the organs become strong once again, the numbers will stabilize closer and closer to perfect. At that point, the body will be gaining reserve energy as fast as possible. Question. Once you have all the numbers, is that the complete analysis? No, your eyes will be checked to determine the extent of vascular distortion and engorgement. This pattern will be recorded. Depending on whether your RBTI consultant is licensed, a brief case history may be taken, vital signs checked, and if the numbers warrant it, a more detailed physical may be performed for your benefit. It will depend on whether it is a nutrition consultant doing the test or a licensed health professional. Medical doctors have the privilege under their license to add additional ancillary procedures as they see fit. Additionally, your consultant will review your test numbers as compared to a range chart. When you've done all this, or whatever part needs to be done in my case, can you make a diagnosis of what's wrong with me, if anything? Answer: The word diagnosis literally means an educated guess. Therefore, seldom if ever are two diagnoses exactly the same. When you use an analytical procedure, that is repeatable and therefore not a guess. We analyze. The RBTI consultant does not diagnose and we wish no part of the analysis to ever be construed as such. If the case should be that a medical doctor, chiropractor, or osteopath utilizes RBTI analysis to evaluate you, they may verify certain portions of the test with other standard procedures and give you a detailed diagnostic evaluation. Remember, however, that they are licensed by the state to treat disease. Well, can you tell me anything? Answer, yes. When the analysis is complete, the consultant can determine certain tendencies in your health based on the pattern of your numbers. That doesn't mean you have a certain condition necessarily, but research has shown that people with numbers such as yours have a tendency toward certain conditions. You may in fact have the condition or conditions in question, but the analysis is never to be used as a means of naming diseases. Before we continue, let's review several points that are very important from the nutrition consultant standpoint. First, the test is not a means of making a diagnosis. Diagnosis, diagnosis is always the job of the licensed health professional. No attempt is made to cure any disease. Naming a disease does not cure it, and the same is true of any diet. A diet does not heal any disease any more than a doctor heals a disease because it is obvious that the body must heal itself. All that we can attempt to do is to change the body chemistry through diet back to a biological norm so that the body has more abundant energy to heal itself. God is the ultimate position to your healing. The suggestions made to you by the consultant are based on what he or she would do if they had numbers similar to your numbers. No attempt at prescribing is intended or should be construed as such. Whether or not you take the advice offered to you is your decision. Before we go on, let us review several other points. The nutrition consultant with no other degree is not allowed to treat disease or prescribe. They determine needs you may have relative to your diet or diet related factors 
and make suggestions to you based on acceptable nutritional standards. The doctor of chiropractic may in some states be able to discuss dietary revision with you under the scope of his state license. In those states where diet is not covered in their state scope of practice, they may still consult with you as a nutrition consultant as long as they don't include it as an active portion of their chiropractic practice or give you the impression that it is part of chiropractic. A medical doctor is licensed to treat disease by whatever method is acceptable to his peers and state organizations. They consider a deficiency state as being a disease or a precursor to certain symptoms which are named for the sake of classification. If they wish to tell you that they are specifically treating you for instance for anemia by suggesting iron supplementation, they can if they so wish because it is in the scope of their licensing act to do so. On the other hand, the nutrition consultant may discover by analysis that your diet is deficient in iron and they may suggest iron supplements or iron rich foods to you in an effort to balance your diet, but they may not tell you that they are treating you for anemia or even suggest it to you. Treating disease is as a specific entity is the privilege of someone licensed to do so and their associations jealously guard those privileges. Licensing laws are rules set up by the state or federal government and not by God. The Bible suggests that you offer help to the sick or infirm. Many churches and individuals involved in the Lord's work openly oppose state and federal laws because they first pay homage to God's message to them. Under their constitutional privilege of freedom of religion, they are allowed to do this even though frequently the regulating bodies may try to interfere. Osteopathic doctors, dentists, homeopaths, many who are also licensed as medical doctors, and in some states, naturopaths may also consult with you in specific if they so desire. You are doing anyone who tries to help you with dietary suggestions a grave disservice by placing them in legal jeopardy when you construe their advice as that of a licensed health professional. Please stay within the law. Question. I have heard that Dr. Reams uses fresh lemon juice in the diet. What is its purpose? Answer: Fresh lemon juice and reconstituted lemon juice will not work. Functions in the role of an anionic substance. Remember, it's the interrelationships between anions and cations that produce energy. The liver needs energy in large quantities to maintain its enzyme systems, its role as a body detoxifier, the citric acid cycle, bile production, and approximately 1,600 other daily roles utilizing an estimated 6 billion enzymes. When we don't get enough anionic substances in the body, the body's energy level drops because we are not assimilating our food properly. When you consider that the vast majority of the food we eat is cationic in nature, you can see the need for the lemon juice and other anions. Question, then shouldn't everybody drink fresh lemon juice and water each day? Answer, it would help the greatest percentage if their numbers were in appropriate pattern. Lemon juice is a high stress food and if the person is not monitored, it may release too many toxins too fast and drive salts, cell debris numbers, and urea up into a very dangerous zone. For example, if your urea was 28, the ingestion of lemon juice right at the very beginning might very well have a disastrous effect on your body physiology. The good RBTI consultant will suggest a water washout until such time as the urea is in a safe zone. Some people with highly inflamed stomachs or ulcers cannot drink lemon water at all because of the burning associated with an ulcer. The best bet is to let the numbers tell you if it's acceptable for you at this time. 
Question. Why use distilled water? Answer. The average body is from 54 to 62 percent water. Contrary to popular belief, thin people have a higher percentage of water in their bodies than fat people. Water is not only used to flush and bathe body tissues, but in every single cellular process that occurs in the body. No other fluid in the known universe has similar properties, but for it to work with optimum efficiency, it must be pure. City water, rain water, or well water are a long ways from being pure. For instance, one study of city water in the Midwest found the water to contain fluorine, chlorine, 24 other elementary chemicals, pesticides and herbicides, flocculation material, traces of heavy metals, bacteria, yeast, and protozoan organisms, and dissolved salts. Many medical doctors believe that city water such as this, by itself, over a period of time would contribute to hardening of the arteries, hypertension, nervousness, heart attacks, and strokes, not to mention constipation, diarrhea when bacterial counts were high, kidney stress, bladder stress, poor digestion, and hyperexcitability of nerve transmission to name a few. For water to draw unwanted ions and other waste from your system, it must be pure. Most municipal water is so highly saturated with deleterious substances that not only can it not help you cleanse your system, it will add to the problem. As an experiment, boil a gallon of your tap water down to four ounces and pour it into a clear glass. Most people who do so quickly decide they won't drink that water again. <laughs>